Hey, this is John Valade with Valade Baseball Academy. Uh, today I've got Scott Coolbaugh with the Detroit Tigers, coach with the Detroit Tigers, on with us in the virtual studio. Hey, Scott, how you doing? How you doing, John? Good, man. Hey, listen, I want to give uh, give everyone a quick background on on what you've been up to in the game of baseball. Of course, you're a coach with the Detroit Tigers. Uh, you made your major league uh, major league debut in uh, September of uh, 1989 for the Texas Rangers. Uh, had a tour with the Rangers, the Padres, the Cardinals, uh, finished that career uh, overseas. And I'd, I'd love to hear a little bit more about that. And you played for the University of Texas, Hook'em Horns. And uh, yeah. I, I'm, a, I'm a Baylor Bear, but we won't hold that against you here at Valade Baseball Academy. <laughs> yeah, I think all the Valades have been at Baylor. So yeah, the old Southwest Conference rivals. A absolutely. And, and as a coach, and we're going to focus a lot on that coaching side today. Um, as well. Uh, you've been with the Texas Rangers, the Baltimore Orioles, the White Sox, and of course now uh, with the Detroit Tigers. So Scott, welcome again to, to VBA. And um, that's, that's quite a background to have with us here. So Scott, let, let's talk, uh, let's talk at the intersection of your playing and coaching career. Uh, first of all, playing in major leagues um, is the goal of every player, I would assume, as you're growing up as a kid, everyone wants to play in the big leagues. What do big league players have in common uh, that younger players really need to pay attention to these days? I think the main thing is the routine, um, you know, and, and that's kind of a, a, a general word. Um, what is a routine, right? Um, it's just not going out there and hitting baseballs and, yeah. and uh, you know, doing things just to say you're working at it. I think these guys are specifically – honed in on their skills on what works for them and they develop these routines in the cage that's prior to the game to get them ready for the game itself so um you know it could be specific things that work on movements it could be work on swing path um anything to challenge themselves uh to get mentally prepared and physically ready for the game every night and i think a lot of the kids today don't really understand what a routine is, what, what really spe uh, specifically is needed for each and individual um, because everybody's different. Um, there's no one cookie cutter way to do it. And everybody's got to understand what works for, that, for them best. And, and eventually they start to, to understand that. But for some, it's, it becomes too late in their career. Yeah. What kind of value do you put on work ethic uh, for young kids? There's some that have a really good work ethic, some that don't. I, I, I don't really look at uh, the work ethic as like just how many swings you're putting in or I think it's the quality and understanding of what you're doing on a specific day, um, whether you're acquiring a, move, a new move, a new type of a swing, whatever it is, um, I think it's really tr truly understanding what you're doing. And that's part of the work ethic that uh, takes these guys to the next level. And you know, I think that there's kids out there that they're willing to go out there and hit when somebody's asking them to do that, but to really focus in on what they're doing is the difference maker. Yeah, understood. Let's let's switch gears to training more specifically, Cooley. What are uh, a few of your favorite drills, particularly if you're, you're looking at an age range from, let's say, I mean, you can break this down because it might be a little bit different on the younger side, but let's say 10 to 15 years old, 15 to 20 years old, different ages of development. What are some of your favorite drills from a training perspective? Man, there's drills for everything. And to really narrow, narrow it down to one specific thing, I think, like I said, it would kind of be in cookie cutter. But the one, one thing that I would use as a tool is the T. And yeah. people really kind of scoff at it and say, ah, you know, that's the T. We did play T ball. We're past that. But it's such a useful tool because you don't need anybody else to practice. You can utilize it on your own. You get a bucket of balls. You can hit on the field. You can see ball flight. You can move the tee around for different quadrants of the plate. You can raise it. You can lower it. Uh, you can put it up against the fence to, to keep the swing closer to you to hit inside the baseball. All those type of things that you can create with a tee that doesn't require another person to either – know how to throw a baseball for BP or flip balls to you and, and, and you don't need a machine. Uh, and there's, it's utilized uh, in a way that you can, you know, really 
hone your, your routine down just to the key work. And a lot of the guys in Major League Baseball today, that's the first thing they go to is the T. Yeah. And um, if you talk to any young kid, they'll look at you and go, oh, no, I don't want to hit off the T. I'm past that. I did that when I was seven years old. Right, right. Yeah. And it involves patience and discipline, too. Right. And, like, yeah, you and said, it, you know, like I said, it eliminates a lot of timing. You don't have to worry about a ball moving. You can, you know, really hone on uh, specific things that you may be working on. Yeah. I mentioned uh, the word discipline. That's kind of the big D word other than Detroit. Right, Scott? So right. this discipline is a big part of hitting. Uh, where do most hitters lose discipline? Well, I think it's, you know, that's really caught up in the result. You know, um, too many people are caught up so much in the result that they get frustration. Uh, they want to change things. That's not working. So I'm willing to go to this next thing. I'm going to move on because I didn't get a hit this this past weekend. Yeah, and, quick fix. Um, nobody understands the, the fact that there, it is a process and um, it is a tough game to to master. You don't I don't think you ever master the game to yeah. um, so just be able to repeat your swing, to be able to do things in the box that are going to allow you to have success. Um, so many kids, they just, they get caught up in the moment and it wants to be changed. And there's so much information out there now that kids are willing to listen to anything to try to give them an edge. And it's typical. Um, we try to fight that against our guys at the, at the pro ball level is that, you know, the results are a product of a good process. Yeah. Yeah. What are a few things that every hitter really needs to know, Scott, if you had to break it down to the, to the fundamentals? Well, I think they've got to really know who they are at the moment. You know, I mean, so many kids at 12 years old or nine years old, their bodies haven't developed. There's some that are different sizes, you know, and everything that's geared toward today is so much predicated against uh, around power. Yeah. Everybody wants to home run. Everybody see how far they hit the ball. Um, it's almost gotten to the point where it's, it's, it's a showcase. Yeah. Um, and I think that kids don't really get to develop of where they're at right now. So I think the biggest thing is like understanding where you're at, uh, what type of hitter you are and, and try to hone it in on that. The second thing is, is really kind of have body awareness, um, really working on understanding how to move your body, how to have rhythm, uh, you know, those type of things, a body control that's working on balance. It's working on explosive movements within a small frame, uh, meaning you stay in a, a, a door frame and be able to be explosive in the small area. Um, and then the last thing is really kind of, for me, is really understanding the, the, like the bat, the, the barrel accuracy of understanding of how to get the barrel to the ball in different quadrants of the plate. So many people try to groove their swing to make it look good in one spot. And I think that's one of the issues today in the game is that, you know, a lot of people are doing that showcase where they're grooving their swing to one spot. Yeah. Let's stay on that topic for a couple of minutes. If, uh, if you spend five minutes on social media or five minutes looking at any training around the game of baseball, the idea of launch angle and the issue of launch angle comes up. What um, it's a big part of the recent hitting talk. What are your thoughts on launch angle? Well, I mean, you know, I understand the launch angle. I think that some people take it to an extreme and thinking that, you know, you got to hit it at this this um, trajectory, so to speak, to get the ball in the air to hit for power. But again, it it also, you know, comes down to play to the, the type of individual, how big he is, how strong he is. I mean, those things kind of change along the way. I think that, you know, if you can get kids more into gearing up of, of being able to square the ball up on the good part of the bat and uh, let it go where it may. Um, a lot of the launch angle will be predicated on based on the, the contact points. Um, if you're hitting the ball more out front or too far out front, it could be a, a, a roll. It's going to be a ground ball. If you're yeah. hitting it too far back, it's going to be possibly a smothered ball. So, I mean, you know, there's, there's a lot of variables to, to launch angle, but, you know, getting kids to square the ball up and, and on a line drive, that's the ultimate goal. And yeah. and to me, that launch angle is based on how hard a kid can hit the ball. I mean, obviously, if a guy can hit it harder like a John Connell Stanton, yeah. his launch angle can be a lot lower. If, if a kid is, is not as strong and he's got to hit it 180 feet, it may look like his launch angle needs to be a little higher. So yeah. 
you know, I think that, you know, people really truly don't understand launch angle and they just see it as what it is. And we're going to try to, you know, acquire this, this thing and acquire this tool because everybody talks about it and they really don't know how to use it. Yeah. You know, one thing that's changed about the game over the many, many years, and uh, you and I are about the same age, we didn't have a lot of this, which I'm about to mention uh, growing up, but analytics, I mean, analytics have become a major part of the game. And what are some of the biggest analytics? What are some of the uh, numerics and data points that you pay attention to with your major league hitters? You know, for me, it's always been about contact and swing miss percentages, um, staying in the zone, obviously making swing decisions, uh, correct swing decisions is very important. Um, you know, so I look at the data that will let me know, you know, how much these guys are swinging out of the zone, yeah. uh, how much swing and miss they have. It kind of, you know, hones it down to whether it's a, you know, a physical issue maybe in their swing or is it something mentally that's going on? Um, those are kind of the smaller parts of, of using the data. I really don't get try to get too deep into it. Obviously, you can get so far deep into it, you can confuse yourself a little bit. <laughs> um, you know, some of these guys today, they want so much information. I think it, it clutters their mind and, yeah. and locks them up and doesn't allow them to use their natural athleticism. So. Yeah. You know, for me, it's it's understanding that use some certain tools that you know really are, are pertain to actually, you know, that you can take to that player and not confuse them too much. And and for the most part, these guys want to square the ball up and and get it moving between the white lines. And if there's something data wise that you can show them that will allow that um, to 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 bring to a bigger picture and understanding, um, that's what I try to use. Like I said, the, the swing and miss rate, the contact rate, the in zone stuff is is very important. Yeah, I love I love the point about not cluttering your mind. You don't want to spend too much time in the sports psychology department. You want to you want to play the game, and uh, not absolutely, clutter. yeah, you want to you want to be an athlete, right? You, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's you know, it's such a tough game, and and you know, there's so many variables to it with the ball moving, changing yeah. speeds. You know, we want these guys to be able to be clear in their mind, to go up there with confidence and, and then use their athleticism a little bit more than trying to walk their way through it and think their way through it. And I think that uh, holds back a lot of the athleticism that sometimes you see that the athletes are not portraying when they're at the bat. Yeah. Let's talk about athleticism. Which player that you've coached has, has the most raw power, just sheer power that you've ever seen at the plate? Well, there's a couple of guys that, that come to mind real quick. And in the past, like I said, when I was with the Texas Rangers, I mean, Josh Hamilton um, is the one that, you know, st stands out the most. I mean, this guy was, uh, you know, you don't want to use the word freak, but a freak of nature, so to speak, that <laughs> he had incredible power. And, you know, there was things that he could do on the baseball field that, um, you know, you were in awe of all the time. And yeah. when he would hit balls, there was just a different sound. And even when, you know, there was other power hitters that you, you know in the game, the way the ball came off Josh's bat, it was just different. Um, another guy that I had a uh, uh, privilege to be around for the first time was Louis Robert from the mm -hmm. Chicago White Sox. I mean, uh, I think that people would – uh, to the younger groups today would see that in the playoffs, he had a 480 foot home run in Oakland. Um, and, you know, it's just an impressive yeah. amount of power that you see from a guy that's 21 years old. And um, you say, how does he hit a ball that much, that much farther than everybody else that may be just as big or just as strong as he is, but uh, he finds a way to, uh, you know, maximize that strength in the right area and the ball just jumps. Yeah. It's, it's a big appreciated aspect of the game too, man. It gets fans in the seats. And um, you know, I was watching an old, uh, old tape on Bo Jackson the other day. And, you know, from, from our era, we looked at guys like Bo Jackson as having just tremendous power. And it's amazing how far training has come to bring guys to, you know, now there are dozens of guys like Bo Jackson in the league. But, you know, thanks for coming on. And, uh, you know, the late baseball Academy really appreciates it. And um, we thank you for following us. And uh, we're certainly going to be rooting for the Tigers this year. And, and hopefully we can get back to normal in Major League Baseball. Well, I appreciate it. And uh, again, you know, Valade, the name Valade in baseball, that goes hand in hand. You guys do a great job. 
James, with the, you know, the, the Academy and, and yourself, I know you guys are doing the right thing and, and trying to present something to the kids that is going to be helpful and, and for them to, to really further their careers. And, and hopefully they'll take a listen to a lot of these, uh, these, uh, you know, podcasts, cast, if you call them that, um, so they can really kind of truly become good players. Scott, thanks so much, man. Appreciate you. Thank you.